Welcome back to my channel. Today I have three very exciting paint packages. It's rare that mail all arrives on the same day and it actually did today. So I have two packages from a Facebook paint swap group, which I absolutely love using. It's a great way to get paints where you're not quite sure if you want the pigments or not, or if you're gonna like the colors before you commit to a full tube. And then I have, I think the fourth, it may be the fifth installment of the 31 Purple Fish Guppies colors, which is the 31 Purple Fish monthly subscription. I have been subscribed to it for the 2023 year and really, really like it so far. So we're going to get into swatching some colors. I will talk about some of them as I swatch, but for the most part, we're just going to look at some really cool colors today. I don't totally remember what I ordered for these and Guppies is always a surprise. So this would be a super fun video. I thought we'd start with the guppy because I'm not 100% sure what they are and it's always fun to see what she comes up with. I believe the guppy colors are limited to guppies for a year so any guppy colors that you see this year have the possibility of being shop colors next year. Sleep brown. Mm, what's this? Peach pie. All right, I'm really excited to look at these. Um, any guppy colors you see this year have the chance of being shop colors next year, I believe is how it works. Though not all guppy colors become shop colors. So a silver dot on a card just means that they aren't a standard size pan. It's how I make sure I know like what's in my studio palette and what's not. Just for the sake of ease of use. It's a nice brown. It pretty much matches my desk, um, which is nice. And then peach pie, it feels like it's going to be very bright. I may be wrong though. And then a pretty bright dew granular. Um, it sort of reminds me of grapefruit in her shop. Like an orange with a pink. There's a sailor ink that's really similar to this. I think it's one like 173. It was on an episode of the Goulet Pen cast recently. Um, it's like this orange with hot pink in it. Which is what this reminds me of. I 
I would say that slate brown is quite a nice like neutral brown, especially washed out. It leans more grey washed out, which I like. I like having sort of neutrals that can be multi-use. Dark, it feels like there's going to be so much hot pink in this. And then washed out, it doesn't seem like there's as much hot pink. So I'm going to have to see what it feels like once I'm painting with it. I think our next package is going to be um I'm gonna save the biggest for last because we're gonna go with the flowery one this is one of the Facebook swap packages um So I ordered a bunch of different um, quarter pants. Oh, and she included paper samples. So I'm gonna slide the papers off to the side because I... Actually, some of these are papers I wanted to try, like the Jackson's papers and Fluid and Bao Hong. Mm, and oh and Saunders actually I've got I think I've got the fluid but I've wanted to try the Jacksons and the Saunders and I've got a little bit of bow hung. and then these are a real mix so we have core in here we have da Vinci um, and then we've got some Daniel Smith this is the first core and da Vinci that I am adding to my palette. So that's Quinn Rose by Da Vinci. Um, I got them for a really great price and I've been wanting to try them and see how they play with my other paints. I think I'm gonna have to split this bag. And so just for the sake of not spending a whole bunch of money investing in paints that may or may not play well with what I've already got in my palette, I decided to buy them off this swap group actually traded. I had some pigments that she wanted to try and did I order any Daniel Smith? Not a Daniel Yeah. Um Let's sort these. Oh, yep, Daniel Smith, Core, Core, Daniel Smith, Da Vinci, Daniel Smith, Da Vinci, Da Vinci, Da Vinci, Da Vinci. So the only two I got from Core were their Indigo and their Sap Green, mostly because those are just the colors that I try in brands as a rule. So we are going to start with maybe we'll start with red and yellow. I'm going to start with this line. Oh, it's such a pretty green. It's so bright. It is. Yellow, yellow green.
Mm -hmm. And so some of these are colors that I've got from other brands, like this Perylene Violet. Uh, I have the either the Roman Small or the White Knights version, and I like it. And so I just wanted to try it from another brand, um, just for the sake of. I have a feeling it's White Knights. Um, and that's why I wanted to try it from another brand. Because there are some pigments that I'm having trouble finding. <laughs> versions that I like from other brands as much. There are just some that aren't, aren't quite as nice in some other brands. There's also some pigments that some other brands just don't seem to make. This is also a great break from Fall Fair stuff. I think by the time you're seeing this, you'll have seen at least one Fall Fair video, but maybe you haven't. Um, I've spent the past eight weeks like thinking about it, and really the past two weeks creating stuff for it. We are just. It's Tuesday now, and entries are due Thursday, so it's the final, just finishing touches on things. Just watching some nice mental break. This is... Quinacridone Rose. is potentially going to get harder to find. I've only heard one person talking about it and the people I know hadn't heard about it before that person started talking about it. So I don't quite know what's going on there, but it is going around that quinacridones are all being discontinued. Um, no one's, no brand has actually come out and said it, but just going around on the art internet that quinacridones are all being discontinued, which would be quite sad. There are some really nice quinacridone colors. Um, I use quinacridone magenta all the time. And I'm wishing I had more quinacridone burnt orange. I've got a single half pan. This is core sap green. And Core does crazy things, apparently, um, which is why I only bought a little pan of it. You can do the Danny Smith all in a row. Do the Core all in a row. This chorus, or is this indigo? It is indigo. So the three colors I tend to try from brands are indigo, quinacridone gold, or quinacridone gold hue, and sap green. Um, quinacridone gold or quinacridone gold hue because it's one of my most used colors in paintings, um, and then. The other two because they tend to be different mixes across brands. No brand tends to have the same pigments for a mix and so I like trying the different ones and seeing which version I like better. Da Vinci, 
Oh, I got Da Vinci's Point Actors on Films as well. Um, we are, we're on a bit of a single pigment kick lately. Um, because it makes doing videos like the Potter's Pink video and the... Green Earth a lot easier when I've got the single pigments to do, the, do those mixes. So there is quite a lot of difference. This one is significantly brighter. I actually prefer the Daniel Smith. This one's from Da Vinci's a bit too orange. But both are PV19, so that's just difference in pigment. Which happens quite a lot, actually. Very bright blue. Oh, cobalt blue. For a while, I was cadmium and cobalt free, but there are so many pretty cadmium and cobalt colors, and so now I am just more careful about how I use them. Um, I think that if you decide you don't want to use them, that's fine. There are some great alternatives out there. But if you want to use them, as long as you are doing it in a way that is safe, so not licking your paintbrush, um, if you have small children, being careful about not using it around them. When I do projects for other people, I don't paint with cadmium or cobalt, and I make sure my brushes are clean before I start the project. Um, just as a precaution, because I know some people don't want anything to do with them. Um, that is their cobalt turquoise. Um, currently, I think the Daniel Smith version is still my favorite. PB36. Um, I was hoping that the Rosa Galleries would become my new favorite, but theirs is now a mix, and so it no longer fits into the sort of single pigment cobalt turquoise thing that I've got going on. left and I'm not actually sure. That's ultramarine. What are you? Yellow blue. Oh. This is the perk. Er, <laughs> I was going to call it a perk. It's not really a perk. This is the fun of a brain injury is that I ordered these paints. I poured paints for this person. I poured paints into pans for this person. I, you know, did all that stuff. And I don't know what I ordered. I don't remember. Um, normally I keep a very up-to-date spreadsheet of like the pigments I've ordered, the paints I've ordered. These, I had that I had an order coming from her. Didn't have what I ordered. So, I, other than the fact that it said core and da Vinci, um, so.
I have to say though, I'm quite happy with my color choices. It's, I wish I'd found a yellow from either Da Vinci or Core. I don't know that she had a yellow available though. And that's sort of the limiting factor in what people have available. Um, I do like the Da Vinci paint formula. It's very smooth, it's very easy to re-wet. The trick is how well does it play with the other paints in my palette? Um, because if it doesn't play well with others, then I won't end up buying more. And there we go. That is package number two. Swatched. So now that we're dry, like it's pretty clear to see the difference between the Daniel Smith and the Da Vinci. I much prefer the Daniel Smith version to the Da Vinci. I do sh really like the Thalo yellow, which is shocking. I thought it was going to be too yellow, which is why I only got a quarter pan of it. That's what I like about this group though, is that I've bought a quarter pan and now I know that next time I see Daniel Smith tubes on sale, I should probably get a five mil tube of it my collection and now we get to start on the final package which is also the most exciting because I know what's in it for the most part it is massive though this is a trade that I made but it's more than that because I traded a whole bunch of metallic paints from brands that I love for what is in this envelope. I'm really excited. Using a milk thing to protect it. Very smart. Ice cream sandwiches. Oh, that's pretty. are two dog cards. One is Shemenke's and one is some of the supervision colors. So I have I have purple brown rubia and rubia purple maybe nope. I don't know. I feel like I've got some of those colors, but maybe I don't. And then we have a whole bunch of pans. Alright, I'm going to start by unwrapping these dog cards. So I do have some of the Supervision colors. I don't dislike them. They're just not my favorite. I wish they were a bit clearer on there. Ooh! Oh, we were talking about these. These are the Rembrandt Chameleon colors, and I believe instead of mica, she said they use glass particles. Um, so we're gonna have to look at those. Specifically, super granulators. And these are dots are massive. They are probably the size of the mini 0.5 ml pans. Um, you sometimes get a sample from handmade paint brands. Uh, that is probably the amount of paint that at least some of these dots are. Um, 
because these were all colors that I wanted in pans that she just didn't have enough of. I was looking to buy Schmincke paints domestically. And they're a bit hard to find in Canada if you don't want the 15 mil tubes. This is absolutely stunning. Um, one, I love the card. Two, these are sewn on. <laughs> And so we are going to very carefully take this part. Let's start with this top one because I think it's going to be the easiest. So this is Deep Sea Violet. So there were some of the Schmankes that I did get in pants. Oh, that's such a smart trick. I wonder what type of paper that is, so that they don't stick. It's the same thing Rosa Galleries does. I'm going to cut one of these threads. of the fun is in the packaging. It's like a challenge that I'm not winning. I should be able to do this low cutting off the thread. But I might not be able to do this without cutting another thread. Oh, there we go. There was our problem. We had two quarter pans stacked at the end. thought I ordered more than one quarter pan. So we have, so far we've had deep sea violet and a whole bunch of dots. We have galaxy violet. We have Tundra Pink. We have Tundra Blue. that I can unwrap things. Mars Brown. Volcano Yellow, which I'm very excited for. Um, it is one of the ones that I keep debating buying. And then I found out that it was the same pigment that Windsor and Newton had in one of their regular line colors, and so I just bought a two from them. Mahogany Brown, which is, I want to say, PBR33. Um, and that was hard to track down. This is Windsor Newton Viridian. So excited for this. This is Cobalt Violet Hue. This is PV62. No other paint brand carries this in their line. Schmincke uses it in a whole bunch of their super granulating colors. And when I talked to my friends that are pigment dealers, none of them were able to purchase it from anyone. So I have no idea how Schmincke has found it. 
a couple of the suppliers had never heard of it before. Um, and once I explained and had sent them the link to the Schmincke listing for the paint made out of it, they started to look for it and no one could find somebody that was selling the pigment, which is super interesting. And it doesn't happen very often. And this is White Knight's Lamp Black, which is, I believe, PBR7. Sorry, PBK7. There are very few blacks that are made with this pigment. It's either PBR7, PB. K7 or PBK6. And I tried about eight different art stores to find the Schmincke version of this color. No one had it. No one could order it in. And it just so happened that this person on Facebook still had a little bit left in an old white nights tube. So we're gonna get into color swatches. Um for the dot cards I think I'm just gonna swatch with like a little brush to the side. And I don't know that I'm gonna swatch the shiny card. I might I might leave it for last. So we're gonna leave the dot cards for last. And we're gonna start with the pants. All right, I have a pile of swatch cards. So I'm gonna sort these out by things that aren't super granulating and things that are. And we are actually gonna start with the yellow. My brush has already contaminated this page. <laughs> Yellows are stressful. Start regretting everything. So. I'm gonna make sure that I've got enough space for all the stuff. I know that I like the Windsor Newton version of this color, so I'm interested to see if I feel differently about the Schmincke version. Hmm, so far I feel about the same, which is, I like it. It's an interesting yellow in that it really granulates, uh, which is uncommon for the yellow. Next up we have Deep Sea Violet. Do a diluted swatch, which doesn't seem like it's going to be an issue. They have so many purpley blues in the super granulating line that I didn't get the purpley blues in big pans. I feel like in my palette that's pretty covered, but I did want to try as many of the super granulating colors as I could.
This is Galaxy Violet. Oh, much more purple. Much more purple. Uh, really reminds me of a couple 31 purple fish colors. And maybe a white knight's color. Yeah, I forgot what it's called. Um, it's not Galaxy Haze. It does look like Galaxy Haze, but it's got more red in it than Galaxy Haze has. Is it Poser Haze? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Did I write the wrong name? Next up is Tundra Pink, which I know I like. My mom has this in her palette. I just watched it out, and I like it enough that I decided I wanted a little pan of it for my own palette so that if I was putting together a travel palette, I didn't have to keep stealing it from her. It's a very purpley pink. I would say like as a color it leans more purple than like traditionally pink. But it is a really fun color. Um, Cosmic Creation Shadow Rose is what it reminds me of. Is something that reminds me of it. I think they both play around with the same potter's pink. Uh, Ultramarine blue combination. Hunter Blue is another one that I know I really like from my mom's palette, and I know I like it enough that I got a full pan, a uh, half pan of it, because I have actually found that there are a couple colors that you can use for mixing, and Tundra Blue is one of them. Tundra Blue, if you use it in a mixing trio, gives you absolutely spectacular mixes. Because we can, let's do Shinge Cobalt Violet Hue. 
mostly because I really want to see what it looks like in person. I'm underwhelmed. I think it felt so hyped up because it was a pigment no one else could get. I mean, I was so excited for it. I thought it was going to look really different. Um, it doesn't feel that different from the PV15. Maybe PV15. So, I just grab swatches. Like, it feels like I could fall in that, like, PV15 world. These are two different PV15s. It also sort of feels like it could fall in, like, the PV3 world. Um, I think I overhyped it to myself just because it was a pigment that, you know, I couldn't find anywhere else. And when I was talking to pigment people about it, none of them could find it from anyone, which is always a fun mystery. Um, and so either way, I was going to get it from my palette, but I am glad that I got it this way and did not buy a tube of it because I think I would be really disappointed if I'd bought it too and swatched it and this was the color I got. Not because it isn't a pretty color, but because I have other purples that are similar and have a similar effect. So we have done all of those. Mahogany brown. It's a very nice rich brown. We have Mars Brown, which is a PV6. I'm doing that off the top of my head. <laughs> I'm fair, I'm doing most of these off the top of my head. It's the lamp black that's tripping me up. I'm not quite sure what it is. It's either, there were two black pigments I was trying to track down, I can't remember which one, the White Knights versions. I've got the Daniel Smith Viridian, and I've got Viridian Hue from somebody. Who do I have Viridian Hue from? Um, Holbein. And I am not a fan of the Daniel Smith version. I like this. Um, it's like an emeraldy. Yeah, I prefer this.
this like feels like it has body to it as a green. It's very black. That is an opaque black. <laughs> it is very reminiscent of Inky by Cosmic Creations or Addison and Sedwig's Chinchilla, um, which I believe. I think Inky is PBK9. I don't know what Chinchilla is. That is opaque and dark. When I go, I want a black watercolor. Like, this is the type of black watercolor I want. I'm so tired of, like, black watercolors that aren't actually black and aren't opaque. And, like, you can't get those really deep dark colors out of. So hopefully the Schmincke version will be easier to find soon because the White Knight's colors are quite difficult to find these days. Um. And I think we've got, if I scooch these pans out of the way, we've got just enough space for the much dark ones down here. Let's snag these dot cards and scooch these pans. So, I'm going to start with the supervision. So the Supervision watercolors are made in China. Um, I think I've got Rubia Indigo. I think I've got Purple Brown. I've got Blue Brown. They're not paints I love. They're not paints that I hate. Is how I would describe them. Um, they're just not when I need a granulating paint. They're not really the colors that I reach for all that often. Um, they're not super easy to get. For a while they were on Amazon. They aren't anymore. They weren't the last time I looked. I do really like that, the ruby of purple. I have a feeling as it dries, like you're gonna get some crazy granulation out. So I am not gonna scooch this out of the way. Pull in the important one and I'll pull that one back in once it's dry. I'm gonna do the same sort of thing with just like a tiny little dot of each. Mostly because I don't want to waste any of this precious paint. But I also like want to know what these colors look like. These ones that are going 
wet on wet. Or wet on damp, I guess. So I do have haze and it on. I have haze blue in my palette. Mm. So I have them as twos. Actually, Mom has them as twos, and I brought about a quarter pan's worth on my palette. I find that the bright blues in the super granular lighting are the ones that I dislike the most. It's the same issue I have in the galaxies. Like, they're just, they're so bright. But I don't really know what to do with them. Just watched a deep sea violet. Oh, this looks familiar. So there we go. There are the haze colors. So that's those. And then we have the really shiny ones. And I believe she said these work best on black. I don't know that I've got black in the cup. I have the teeniest strip of black already divided from another project. So. I'm just going to take four squares of this in the shimmer water container, which has half a pan stuck to it. Cosmic Creations paint. So I've heard of these paints before for the Chameleon Collection, and I think what this person was saying when we were trading was that they contained like glass particles. Um, I had heard that they acted differently than normal shifters did. And so I just didn't feel the need to add them to my palette. I would say they really remind me of ghosts so far. They've got that like spooky sort of The camera's not picking them up at all. Um, I have to tilt this page a bunch to see if I can get it to pick up this at all. We'll sort of I'll do the last one and then I'll see if I can get it to photograph. Um, They are definitely very sparkly. Sort of helps. I think the top one, which you can't see again, which is the <laughs> uh, violet blue green is probably my favorite which is no surprise like you can definitely see the specks of different colors 
unlike a normal shifter though like there is like a change when you move your head but there are definitely specs that are like staying certain colors so it's cool i'm gonna have to play around with them a little bit more and see what i can come up with this one though has dried quite a lot and i do quite like this purple at the bottom and the red violet. I'm a fan of those like moody granulating colors. Um, I like them. I know lots of people don't, but I enjoy them. Yeah. I think there's also like some pink in this turquoise. Like this is what I wish Glacier turquoise. There's one of the glacier colors that's really disappointing, <laughs> and I just got it. This is what I wish that color was, where it like had something to it. I swatched it out and I went, like, this is just a pan of turquoise paint that costs significantly more than most of the turquoise paint does. And then this is not quite dry yet. I really like deep sea green. I like haze pink, unsurprisingly. It contains potter's pink. Um, I like haze indigo and haze blue, not surprising. I've got them in my palette. I really like deep sea indigo, so I'm gonna have to track down a pan of that. So I think deep sea green and deep sea indigo and maybe haze pink are what I'm gonna need pans of. And because I can, I'm gonna paint something with all of these, which I like might regret. Also because there's always one person in my comment section complaining in these haul videos that I get these paints and I never paint with them. Or in the mixing videos, that I do the mixing videos and I never paint with them. Like if you watch more than one video on my channel, I do paint with them. Just like one video a week tends to be like swatching and stuff like that and one video tends to be painting because painting videos take a lot of effort and energy and I enjoy swatching videos and like the knowledge side of like the potter's paint video and stuff is also super fun. This is the Fabriano paper that I quite like. Um, my reference image is from Pexels. It's the reference site I tend to use. Um, I'm just going to list all the paints as the supplies for this because, in all honesty, I'm sort of just grabbing willy nilly. always 31 purple fish spreads
This corner is so moody. All the way down into the water section. Well, if it wasn't for the island, you almost wouldn't know that it was water. Where it went from land, where it went from sky to water, I mean. I have to say, I don't love the core so far. So just be like application. Let's throw some more tundra blue in here. So we have no clean palettes. So all of our blending is happening on the page. So we were really prepared to paint tonight. So at some point my film died and so <laughs> the page is now dry. I don't know at what point my phone died. Hopefully you saw at least some of the creation process. Um, I want this purple. I think sky needs another sort of layer. I think it's a good base. But I think I want another layer to give it a bit more dimension before I start the mountains and stuff.
actually this corner is almost it's almost black I am sort of cheating this by speckling it in and almost making it look like a super granulating. An undertone looks like water on the side. It's not an image, like it's got this little section that it's like slightly darker. So back up here.
Alright, let's try this again. Let's use the only clean palette space I have, which is these four little wells on the Lisa Alden palette, and create like a greeny, bluey, mountainy color. on the Viridian, pitch of black, It's not far off, but I want to find a bit more black. A little bit more green. Now we're too green. Touch on the ultramarine again. And a little bit of black. Sure. And we're just gonna freehand these in. Because. No one's gonna tell me not to.
open up the screen. Actually, I'm not being lazy. I am you know, cheating this. Just a little bit. Which in turn is giving me some lovely variation to my trees. What is supposed to be trees?
there. For like 45 minute painting with paints that I'd never used before. I'm quite happy with it. Um, there are definitely things I'd tweak if I was using paints I was used to. And also brands that I've never used before. I've never used Da Vinci, I've never used Core. And I use 31 Purple Fish a lot with other brands, but normally it's other handmade brands, not other big brands. So I hope you enjoyed getting to see the paints actually in use. This was a fun video to film. Um, I like playing around with new colors. It's always fun. I will leave all the colors I got today down below, as well as the link to the Facebook group that the paints were purchased in. Thanks so much for watching.